this is my first time in central London, certainly since the uh, lockdown began, possibly this year actually, if you take central London to me in this part of central London from say St Paul's to Hyde Park and down to the Thames and up to King's Cross. It's been a long time and it feels both exciting and a bit strange. Coming up the tube there at Holborn, up the escalator was a little bit, I felt a kind of tingle in my stomach actually. It's uh, 10 to 5, 10 minutes to 5. I thought we would just take a little walk around central London really, just to see what it's like in this post-lockdown world. It was often a habit of mine to do this on a Sunday afternoon, particularly in the winter, to get the tube to Holborn or Chancery Lane and have a walk up through uh, Bloomsbury and then down maybe towards Soho and then down to Embankment. I don't know if that's the route we'll take today, but it'd be good just to walk up sort of uh, towards the British Museum and then, I don't know really, go across down towards Oxford Street, see where we end up. But it's just nice to really get a feel for what central London is like at the moment, because I've got no idea. When I was living abroad and homesick, this is the walk I would imagine I was doing in my head, up Kingsway and then along Southampton Row. One of the reasons I would come here on a Sunday afternoon around this time, coming up for five o'clock on a Sunday, is that because of all the hotels and stuff around here and all the tourists, it would be a quite a lively place where, it's, you know, the sort of Leighton Stone and the suburbs is fairly quiet at this time on a Sunday. So it'd be a good gauge, really. was a currency exchange place here. Now it's all closed, there's no, no business in there now. This has always been one of my favourite little lanes in central London. Leading down to Queen Square. This souvenir shop would always be open on a Sunday. Square has long been one of my favourite areas of London. Sort of, you know, if you think of the kind of postcard image of London, we, I think we all probably have our own postcard image of London, don't we? Aside from the obvious ones. Well, this is one of mine. The Bloomsbury kind of avenues and boulevards and these squares and Russell Square, I think, is my favourite. And this definitely looks a lot quieter than usual. So do the streets around... Uh, up Southampton Road, they're definitely a lot quieter, a lot less traffic. Far fewer people, not as many shops open. But this on a Sunday is really busy because you've got, obviously, you've normally got the students who, who have just started, I think. The students gone back this week and you've got tourists and just generally people who like to come into central London, no matter what the weather is. This is a really nice place to walk, actually, particularly in the, in the autumn. Great little cafe over there. Even that seems pretty quiet. This is the outside of Russell Square. And these buildings here house various departments and schools of the University of London and Birkbeck College. This is the building where T.S. Eliot worked for Faber and Faber famously for 40 years. I didn't realize he worked here for that long. And this is one of the great London buildings here, the Institute of Education. A bit more brutalism here, the School of Oriental and African Studies. 
I really love walking through these gates during the week when it's a real hive of activity. All the students are out here and there's bookstalls set up and everyone's having their lunch. It's fantastic. I don't think I've ever seen it this empty. Senate House, this famous library. Birkbeck College. Not a soul around. So to be fair, today is the 27th of September. So the students have only just come back and I don't know what the situation is. I don't know if they're welcome on campus or not. But there really is nobody around. I mean, it's very rare to see any part of central London like this, apart from at Christmas. You get it in that, particularly that week between Christmas and New Year, you get this kind of level of kind of emptiness and uh, deserted streets. I'm actually quite enjoying it, to be honest with you. Because, like I say, it's a real rarity to be able to walk through here. <laughs> and you've got the whole place to yourself. It's a bit like Day of the Triffids. Part of that is shot around here, the original TV adaptation. My book was in that window once. That was a really beautiful moment when I just wandered along here and there it was. Couldn't believe it. This looks interesting. The Book of Trespass by Nick Hayes. i to add that to my list. So we'll go down Mallet Street. So we're just looping round the university here. University of London Union, ULU. I went to many gigs there over the years. In fact, I went to a gig there in October. I saw Thurston Moore there in an incredible night. What an unbelievable performance that was. It does make you wonder when we'll be going to gigs like that again. RADA, the Royal Academy of Dramatic Arts that's produced some of our finest actors. I had a place to do a Masters at Birkbeck in 1993 and I used the money to go travelling around the world instead. I met the wife. really is a ghost town. This is the back of the British Museum. It's probably closed now or in the process of closing. Montague Street. This is basically a street of hotels. So it's uh, completely dependent on tourism. Great Russell Street. The British Museum. Looks like they're doing some renovation work. The 
this beautiful old building here has been boarded up for a while, a good couple of years at least. Coptic Street, this is a great street. Quite a famous building here, Congress House, home of the Trades Union Congress. I feel like I should know what this building used to be, but I but I don't. I think it's quite a swanky hotel and restaurant now though. This was a very controversial building when it was built, a real concrete carbuncle. It's actually quite beautiful at night when it's all lit up. Tottenham Court Road, one of central London's principal thoroughfares. Centre Point Tower. Oh my god, this has radically changed since I was last here. This is the corner of Totten Court Road and Oxford Street and Charing Cross Road. What on earth is that going up above the new Totten Court Road station? And this is the thing they built over the old fountain that was opposite the Astoria and the back of uh, Denmark Street over Denmark Place which had been there since at least the 17th century, possibly even earlier. That great big shiny blob. What the dickens is the outer net? And this is looking down Oxford Street. been seeing some of the work over the years they've been doing around Soho gradually replacing the old buildings with these new monstrosities purely built for investment purposes but this is uh, this is every bit worse than I ever could have imagined it looks hideous I mean I know it's only half built but <sighs> apparently it's called Soho place a new 285,000 square foot destination for London with new offices, retail, theatre and public realm directly linking through to Soho Square. And that, my friends, used to be the historic Astoria Theatre. I was really looking forward to walking down Charing Cross Road, another one of my favourite streets in London, but I'm almost scared to go down there now. How much of it will be left? What is this? I think this is the old Foils building, isn't it? What a monstrosity, it's awful. <laughs> what have they done? It's called Elona Rose House. I don't know what I call it. I don't want to become one of those sort of old grumpy people moaning about change, but I mean, come on. They're having a laugh with this. Wow, old oh, Compton Street looks pretty lively. This is great, where they've blocked the street off, you've now got tables in the middle of the road. That's fantastic. So the Three Greyhounds is a great place to come for a drink. They've got loads of outdoor seating right in the middle of old Compton Street. This is fantastic. This is what it should be like all the time in Soho. Look at this. Let's keep this, let this be the new normal. Queue outside Ronnie Scott's. That's a very heartening sight. London's legendary jazz club is alive and well. Bar Italia legendary institution. As much as, I, uh, as much as I enjoyed the kind of quietness of Bloomsbury, I found this a really heartening experience. This is kind of uplifting. 
Um, I love uh, I love blocked off streets <laughs> and uh, tables serving food and drink in a blocked off street. What more can you want? Live music in the street. That would be good. Some live music out there. How lovely. How lovely. Although I wasn't tempted enough to kind of want to sit down and take part in it. I'll save that for an evening with the family. Right, we're just going to walk down to Piccadilly Circus now. Wardour Street. Shaftesbury Avenue, past Les Miserables. Still don't think the theatres are back open yet, but hopefully they will be at some point in the not too distant future. big lump of this street corner has been taken out. I don't think it was a particularly old building from memory. I think this is where uh, Jamie Oliver had a place, didn't he? And there was where the street artists would be there under the colonnade and do portraits of people. I think that was what was there. Can you remember? Can you put it in the comments? So when it's really busy somewhere, what do we say? We say, my word, it's like Piccadilly Circus in here. Well, let's see what Piccadilly Circus is like today on the 27th of September 2020. And this will be where the walk will end down here, I think. Well, thank you for joining me on this stroll through central London in this strange time that we're currently living in. And I look forward to seeing you all on the next walk, wherever that may be. I mean, today was slightly a little bit of an odd one, wasn't it? And uh, I've really enjoyed it. I've really enjoyed the contrast of today, you know, from the deserted Bloomsbury squares and streets to the vibrancy of Soho and this lovely scene here as the sun sets over the statue of Eros of Piccadilly Circus. So take care of yourselves and I'll see you next week. <laughs>